Hey, good morning, all. Barry and Margo. Is it both of you, or is it just Barry or just Margo? Margo's taking care of Laurel, a sister who did very well. So prayers answered there. Hi, Judy Hatch, and hi, Ken Woods. Don Jones, I hope everything's nice and crisp and beautiful up there at Crystal Lake. Such a beautiful place. It really, really is. Hi, Judy Martin. Hi, Tracy Crutz. I think um, there's two lakes that are just stand out to me in Michigan, and uh, they're both in the same area. One's Crystal Lake up by Benzonia, and then a little bit further north from that up by Bel Air is Torch Lake, and they're both crystal clear. Um, Torch is bigger, but uh, boy, I tell you what, when you're when you're literally, you can be in 50 foot of water and see the bottom. It's that, it's that clear. Hi, Tracy Crutz. Larry and Carolyn Thomas, good morning to you. Carrie's with us. Good morning. You know, Carrie has uh, got plans here. There's a contingent going up to Camp Wakanda for the Labor Day camp, work camp. Some work, some play, right? Hi, Robin Allen. Joanne Butters, good morning. Hi, Gene Hardwick. I'd imagine you're up north too, right? Good to see everybody. So this is the Thursday, September 2nd. How do we get to September? But uh, we are um, moving forward into the fall. Hi, Nancy Horvath. Hi, Aunt Mary. Um, the uh, I saw that the Horvoss had a, a grandparent grandson match, and Nancy was victorious. Hi, Kip. How are you? The um, so anyway, the, what I'm saying, what I was saying about this is, we got coming up into a Labor Day weekend. I hope everybody. Uh, it looks like the weather is going to be absolutely beautiful for us. I hope that you're all. If you're not going somewhere, um, I hope that you'd still get a chance to relax a little bit. Meg and I are taking off um, after this sometime. Um, and uh, we're going to head north. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Kip says, boo, that was the, the results there. There was a, what was it, an 18th hole birdie to win the thing. Joy and Steve Yambor. And so we are heading up to our cottage, which is just north of Muskegon. It takes about three hours to get up there. Uh, sometime later. And um, I, I've learned not to drive on the Friday before Labor Day. It's just a mess, just a real mess. So we're going up there today. And uh, I am going to be coming back uh, on Sunday morning. I'll leave probably around 6 or so and uh, come down. And I will uh, preach. So anybody who is in church, you'll see me. If you're online with us, I'll be there. And uh, so we'll have we'll worship, and then I'll turn around and come back. And we have so pretty much the rest of the week that uh, we're going to be up there too. Bit half vacation, half work. I'm still working on some stuff up there, including we will do the uh, devotions on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Carrie has agreed to do them on Thursday. So we're going to take Monday off because that's a holiday. That's the Labor Day. Nobody should labor on Labor Day. All right, uh, Sandy Sauerbeck. Good morning. Sandy, I like your shoes. Meg, Meg found these uh, these great shoes. Some people have, and I saw Sandy got a pair. That's great. Hi, Gail and Barbara Wolf. Good morning to you. All right, 26 folks. So we were right at 9.01, so we're going to move ahead. So now we're going to read, we're going to read ahead a little bit, right? Uh, since we're not, normally we don't do this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but now we got Monday too. So for our Old Testament historical reading, um, we're going to do at least three, right? We'll probably do today, Friday, Saturday, and that way uh, we'll catch up. We'll see how long they are. I haven't looked ahead, but uh, I've, I'm sitting here in my home studio. I've got my coffee. We, uh, and we're going to open up with Psalm 116 today. So, 
let's give thanks to this beautiful day and uh, let us let us just breathe breathe in and breathe out so that we can center ourselves in this day that God has made for us and that we might feel God's grace and mercy and love as we read his holy word. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol lay hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walked before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith, even when I said I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bounds, my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. All oh, thanks be to God. Isn't that a wonderful psalm? It really is. I, uh, you know, it just carries everything. It shows the depths of despair that we all find ourselves in at some point, but yet um, in the midst of that, Still reaching out and, and uh, not only believing in God, but but resting in God and knowing that uh, that uh, God is merciful. And then, uh, you know, we've we've lost some dear friends of recent, and um, I don't know what that is. Um, we've lost some dear dear friends uh, recently, and and I just love this one. I've I might use it in a sermon, uh, in a homily for a funeral. And um, that verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. So, uh, you know, it doesn't end. It doesn't end when we're here, when we when we leave, leave this place. And there's an awful lot of people that we've had to say goodbye to that I'm really looking forward to seeing again. All right. So we're going to go down here to our historical readings. We're in um, we're in Kings mostly. Sometimes we jump over to Chronicles, but we're in First Kings, and we're talking. We're we're in that time of Solomon building the temple, and um, he's also then um, we're finding out some other things about Solomon today. Um, might have been a ladies' man, um, and. Um, so we find out that the Queen of Sheba from Egypt comes up. We don't know quite that relationship between Solomon and, and, and Sheba of Egypt, uh, but we do know that when she gets there, she's just amazed. She's heard stories of the greatness of the blessings that have been poured out onto Israel because of the, and the wisdom that Solomon has and the fairness that he rules with. But she kind of just poo-pooed it. How can that be? And then she's there, and she's just flabbergasted. So uh, she goes back to Egypt with that knowledge. We're going to keep, keep on here. So this is uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Make sure I'm on the right day here. Yeah. King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh. Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women. From the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the Israelites, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for they will surely incline your heart to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. 
Among his wives were 700 princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, uh, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not completely follow the Lord as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites on the mountain east of Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives who offered incense and sacrifice to their gods. Then the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this matter, yet he sh should not follow other gods. But he did not observe what the Lord commanded. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, since this has been uh, your mind, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes that I commanded you. I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So, we know that in the Old Testament, sometimes there's an awful lot of uh, hyperbole. Things are probably, you know, expanded just to make a point. 700. Seven, among his wives, that means there was more. 700 princesses and 300 concubines, 1,000. That's got to be, that's got to be a hyperbole, don't you think? All right, we'll go to the 3rd of September. Let's see what's in here. See, I can't relieve this because we're in this transitional period here. We went to David, Solomon, now we're going to find out what's going on. And uh, so we're continuing on with uh, chapter 11. Let's see what's going on here. Jeroboam, son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of uh, Zerdah, a servant of Solomon, whose mother's name was Zerah, a widow, rebelled against the king. The following was the reason he rebelled against the king. Solomon built the Milo and closed the gap in the wall of the city of his father David. The man Jeroboam was very able, and when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he gave him charge over all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. About that time, when Jeroboam was leaving Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah, the Sh uh, Shilonite, found him on the road. Ahijah had clothed himself with a new gar garment. The two of them were alone in the open country. And when Ahijah laid hold of the new garment he was wearing and tore it into twelve pieces, he said this to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, See, I am about to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon, and will give you ten tribes. One tribe will remain his, for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city that I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. This is because he has forsaken me, worshipped Astarte, uh, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Milcom, the god of the Ammonites, and has not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and keeping my statutes and my ordinances as his father David did. Nevertheless, I will not take the whole kingdom away from him, but will make him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, whom I cho chose, and who did keep my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom away from his son and give it to you, that is, the ten tribes. Yet to his son I will give one tribe, so that my servant David may always keep a, have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I have chosen to put my name. Excuse me. I will take you, and you shall reign over all that your soul desires. You shall be king over Israel. 
if you will listen to all that I command you, walk in my ways, do what is right in my sight by keeping my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, I will be with you and will build you an enduring house as I built for David, and I will give Israel to you. For this reason, I will punish the descendants of David, but not forever. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam promptly fled to Egypt, to King Shishak of Egypt, and remained in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, all that he did as well as his wisdom, are not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon. The time that Solomon reigned on Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. Solomon slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of his father David, and his son, Rehoboam, succeeded him. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All well, thanks be to God. So we're starting to see this playing out here a little bit. And uh, now we've got a split kingdom. We have the 12 tribes of Israel. Solomon, this is an enduring um, thing that we see in the Old Testament um, about uh, the risk um, and the threat uh, to, to God's people about interacting with neighboring tribes and then um, and then the weakening of of their worship of God so that it starts to become um, symbiotic really with the other with the other gods of the other tribes Solomon actually probably to keep peace within all these women that he had built temples to the mountain east of Jerusalem so it's probably the Mount of Olives um, so um, so that's that's kind of where we are with that, and um, and um, you know um, we can see here all of this. It's a lot of repetition. That's the way ancient Hebrew is. Um, they don't kind of just say, well, we went over that, so we'll just say the past. They kind of they go over it, and but it's good because it it also um, uh, brings out how important it is, right? This keeping the commandments and statutes, walking in the ways of God. All right, so now. We're going to do one thing. We're going to move forward to Saturday the 4th and see where that takes us. All right. Yep. It just continues. So we're going to do this. Um, Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebit, heard of it, for he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon, and Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke that he placed on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, and then come again to me. So the people went away. The, then King Rehoboam, this is Solomon's son, took counsel from the with the older men who had attended his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? They answered him, If you will be a servant to his to this people today and serve them, and speak good words to them when they you answer them, then they will be your servants forever. But he disregarded the advice of the old that the older men gave him, and consulted with the young men who had grown up with him and now attended him. He said to him, um, he said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who we have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? Young men, the uh, young men who had grown up with him and said to him, Thus you should say to this people who spoke to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you must lighten it for us. Thus you should say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. It's going gonna, gonna to rule with a heavy hand here. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king said, Come to me again on the third day. There's three days again, right? The king answered the people harshly. He disregarded the advice. Folks, I got to go just a second. Um, I got to get the dog inside because the, they just came to 
do something on the lawn. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. They said they weren't going to be here till 11. They lied. So we were here with uh, Jeroboam's telling, um, he can return to Rehoboam. Rehoboam's telling all the people, this is how I'm going to rule over you. Harsher than my father ever did. And um, so the king did not listen to the people because it was uh, a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Anijah the Shinite to Jeroboam, son of Nebat. So God turns, right, Rehoboam's heart, as he does with Pharaoh's, does it here, but for his own purposes. Continuing on, when all Israel saw that the king would not listen to them, the people answered the king, what share do we have here in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, look now to your own house, O David. So Israel went away to their tents. Um, but Rehoboam reigned over the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah. When King Rehoboam sent uh, Ad Adoram, who, Adoram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor, all Israel stoned him to death. King Rehoboam then hurriedly mounted his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel had been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was no one who followed the house of David except the tribe of Judah alone. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All right, so there we are. We got that. So interesting right as i say it's days of our lives in the bible right there i'm going to go back to the second here and so we're reading in james this epistle of james in the new testament here we go who is wise and understanding among you show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts. Do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For while this, there is envy and selfish ambition, there will be also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure. It's going to get loud here in a second, folks. Uh, then peaceful, you know, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is shown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something to do and not to do not have it. You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder. You covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you have given your pleasures. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is in turn amenity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. This is a work. Or do you suppose it is for nothing that the scripture says, God yearns jealously for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives all the more grace, therefore he says, God opposes the proud, but gives you grace to the humble. Submit it to yourselves, therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against one another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are you not a doer of the law but a judge? There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who, who then are you to judge your neighbor? We think that uh, this is written at a time of great, great persecution of the church. Um, and um, so when that happens, when bad things are happening, um, organizations tend to start to fly apart. He's trying to pull them all together. All right. I'm going to read quickly this Mark reading, and then we got to go. We're at uh, this events of uh, Good Friday. Pilate spoke to them again. And what do you wish me to do with your man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, what, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barbarus for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in purple cloth, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down to homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Pretty loud here. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Lucas. Folks, we're going to pray real quick, and then I got to, I, this place went crazy all of a sudden. So, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, and uh, we can see that uh, just what's going on here, there's a lot of interruptions that come in throughout our day. And our, our goal is to have the Holy Spirit in us so that we might uh, not let these interruptions uh, uh, change our pathway, uh, which is to follow you. We know that we're coming into a holiday weekend. Many people will be traveling. We ask a uh, safe passage for them. We ask for a peaceful and restful weekend. We ask for continued healing for all. And Lord, uh, we ask that you just allow us to come back together here next Tuesday so that we can continue to uh, expand our understanding of you by reading your, your word. We ask all of this in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen, all. i got to go. <laughs> Didn't expect this. They weren't supposed to be here yet. God bless you all. Love you. Remember, God loves you. So do we here at Mount Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. We'll talk to you later.